All right, so welcome to the Midday Refreshing with your host, Dr. Patty, right here on New Day Ministry. I want to thank you for tuning in today for another week as we continue with the series Start Small, Finish Strong. And believe it or not, we are almost coming to the close of this particular series. And you'll, if, you, if you're just tuning in with us, you will have to get the replays of the earlier lessons um, because they have really been uh, tremendous and a blessing and truly a learning experience for us as we've uh, gone through this process now over the last few weeks. And so this week we're going to continue on and we're going to pick up with the subject of knowing the warning signs you are about to give up knowing the warning signs you are about to give up. And my sub thought for the topic this week is don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. It's not over yet. It's not over till God says it's over. Most of the time when things get the toughest and things get the hardest for you and things look like they are just not going to happen or things look like that they're at their worst, that is the time when you are on the brink of your blessing. And so I want to encourage you today, if you're in that space where you're just ready to walk away from it all and say, I'm done, I'm finished, I can't deal with this, I can't do this no more, hold up. Wait a minute. Let's go to the word of God. So we've been talking from the text Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, the 11th verse that says, I returned, Solomon said, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong. And so we know we've been working off of that as the base scripture uh, for our discussion and talking about setting goals and how we are not in this Christian walk running a sprint, but we are in this race and it is a marathon for sure. And so I'm going to come out of today from the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. We have talked about procrastination. We have talked about renewing your mind, getting your thinking in order. And so today I'm going to talk from uh, the book of Galatians where Paul is admonishing the church of Galatia. Galatians 5 and verse 6. We're going to start there, and we're also going to uh, use another translation from the Message Bible, and then we're going to jump into the sixth chapter. But the part that I want to bring out uh, today is, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Question mark. What happened? You was running well. You was doing so good. You were doing so great. What stopped you? What got you off track? Why did you get distracted? Or why did you deviate from that place where you started out at? And when we talk about that, we're talking in context of the new year. Some of us, many, come into the new year. High expectations. We hit the ground running. We have goals. We have ambitions. We're striving. Things are going to be different. These are the things I'm going to do better. These are the things I'm going to give up. These are the things I'm going to change. And then all of a sudden, things happen. Obstacles are placed in our path. In this, in this case, I would say since we're talking about running a race, you encounter some hurdles. And you didn't expect to be jumping hurdles. Now you've got to jump over hurdles to get to that finish line, to get to that goal, to get to that thing that you're trying to do. And now it's no longer as easy as you expected it to be. And so in the context of the text, Paul talks about how the uh, uh, the Jews got back to, they started off accepting Christ and the Church of Galatia, 
and they were they were doing well and and they were they were following the path of Christianity and then somewhere along the line someone something creeped in and all of a sudden now they're squabbling over the things of the law and he talks about uh, they get into this thing about circumcision and uncircumcision and and what he says to them is that listen all of that stuff could not have saved you all of that stuff could not have brought you salvation in all of that the lord did that was his, that was that was good it was of none effect why because you all had to keep sacrificing a lamb every so often and doing all these things but the work of christ was complete so how did you get cast away or cast aside or detoured over here and distracted in what you were doing for the kingdom of God and got caught away with the things of the law that has now caused this fraction and division in the church. So that's why he's saying you did run well and, and who hindered you. In Galatians 5, 7 through 10 in the Message Bible, it says you were running superbly. What happened? Who cut in on you? Dele deflecting you from the true course of obedience let's take it here when you first received christ as your savior when you first got saved and you were all excited about it and you came home and talked about i joined church i gave my life over to christ i'm a changed person i'm new and then you were going along so good and then what happened who told you whatever they told you that got you all off course now? What did the enemy say to you to get you distracted that now you can't focus on your Christian walk and you stuck now back in the past when God said, I've forgiven you from that. I have redeemed you from the hand of the enemy. I paid the price for, that you can have eternal life. Oh, yes, he did. And so Paul says, you were running well. And then he says, this detour doesn't come from the one who called you into the race from the first place. This is not coming from God. And that's why I said we're talking about knowing the warning signs that you are about to give up. Because it, when you do things in Christ and you do things in the strength of God, not in your own strength, and you do things in the will of God and in the timing of God, God is going to see you through until the end. So Paul says the detour doesn't come from the one who called you into the race in the first place. And this is the Message Bible. And please don't toss this off as insignificant. Because this is a big deal. When you start off in pursuit of your purpose and your passion and the thing that God has for you and the enemy gets you all twisted around and off track. You need to take that seriously. You need to step back and reevaluate that. You need to say, wait a minute here. See, this, here's the thing. you got to know the strategy of the enemy. you got to see him coming a mile away. Because if, if you don't see him, but the Bible says it's the little foxes that chew up the vine. It's just like termites coming into your house. They are little, little termites. But baby, when you got wood, they can do a whole lot of damage. And so you got to eradicate that out of your life and get those things out of your life that are chewing away at you, that are hindering your walk with Christ. And this is what the Bible says. He goes on to say, it only takes a, a minute amount of yeast. In the King James Bible, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. In the Message Bible, it only takes a minute amount of yeast, Ye, you know, to permeate an entire loaf of bread. And he goes on to say, deep down, the master has given me confidence that you will not defect. But the one who is upsetting you, Whoever he is will bear the divine judgment. So you got to figure out, okay, I started off running well. It's Lent season. Okay, we 20 days into Lent, 19 days into Lent. I started off with good intentions. 
of what I was going to uh, give up or what I was going to sacrifice for Lent. And now I'm finding that I'm struggling with that. Why are you struggling with that? So today, what we're going to talk about are some of uh, the warning signs that you are about to give in the towel. We're going to talk about some of the warning signs that you are about to give in the towel. Because again, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. So we need to get to what is it that's going on in your life right now to help you evaluate, step back a minute, and evaluate what is it what is it that's hindering you? What is it? Ask yourself the question, what is really hindering me from getting closer to God? What is really hindering me from from reaching that financial goal? What is really hindering me from uh, 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 reaching that goal for my personal fitness? What is hindering me from really giving up those bad habits that I know that I need to give over to God? What is it that I'm afraid of? You know, what are the things that are causing me to get into this space where I can't seem to either get it finished I'm easily distracted, or I just put it down altogether because of whatever reason. So I always draw from articles from lifehack.org, um, and in my other broadcasts, I, I lean on this in terms of uh, personal motivation, personal goal setting. But I also take this information and use it in the spiritual as well, because not only does your physical man need to be fed, your, your, your soulish realm, your mind, your will, your intellect, your spiritual person needs to be fed as well because it's really from the spirit that manifests into the things that you will do and become stronger to dictate to the flesh what the flesh is not going to do and being able to stand up to your flesh in terms of, of those things, in terms of your mind, your mindset, your will, and how we intellectualize or try to intellectualize God and the things of God, also known as the soulish realm. So, in the article, gentlemen's talking about he's, uh, you know, uh, working on uh, some things in terms of uh, school, and uh, he, he has set some goals for himself. He had taken on some really big goals. One of them, he had moved to a new country because he was going to school. He needed to do his research. He was writing a master's thesis, and then he uh, he was trying to find a job, and then he was also trying to maintain a relationship. Now, anybody knows <laughs> moving can be a chore in and of itself. Uh, when you're when you're in school and trying to do anything with college or get a degree or continue an education, that's going to pull on your time. If you're trying to you know, get a job, and when the job search, that's going to pull on your time. And if you're if you're trying to engage upon dating or any type of relationship or marriage or any of those things, that is going to pull your time. And so, you know, you have to think about what are all the things that I'm doing right now, and 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 where am I doing well? Where am I succeeding? And what thing? What of these four or five things that I'm doing can I give up? because I'm failing miserable at a couple of these things and just not getting anywhere in it. And so what he begins to talk about is how we notice when to give up on something. And one of the things he says is that, you know, one of the warning signs is that you start spending less and less time thinking about that thing. And so... You know, whereas you started off, I'm going to do this for Lent. I'm going to give this up for the Lent season. Like for me, it was French fries, McDonald's French fries. And it seemed like the other night we went to McDonald's and my son was eating those French fries. And I said, child, you know that your mama has given that up for Lent. You won't sit in any French fries in my face. You know, or my daughter, we went to Popeye's. And even though I said McDonald's French fries, I was really trying to give up French fries altogether. And now she's sitting there wanting a biscuit and some French fries and this and that. And I'm wanting to, you know, taste those Cajun fries and just trying to use self-control and not doing that. And so, you know, but what about some other things that 
you may be trying to do for yourself in terms of uh, setting uh, realistic goals or projects or school, or maybe you're looking at, you know, trying to do more work in the church or in uh, ministry, or maybe you're thinking about, you know, you were thinking about your calling, maybe God called you to ministry and you were so excited about that and now you're distracted and you're uh, discouraged. And so one of the warning signs when you're starting to move away from something is that you spend less time thinking about it. And so one of the ways to kind of deter that in terms of when you're trying to strategize to complete a goal, you have to remind yourself constantly that this is not over, okay? Whether it's post-it notes, whether it's little reminders to yourself on your phone or on your tablet, um, you know, on your calendar, constantly Try to remind yourself of the positive things because, again, when you renew your mind and you change your way of thinking and you change your perception about something, you're looking at it as a positive in a way that it can help you. This is going to make me better. This is going to make me stronger. This is going to move me in the direction that I'm trying to get to. It's in terms of minutes, in terms of church, whatever the case may be. You know, you're trying to focus on that thing to get you closer to where the bigger goal at hand is. Now, the second thing with the warning sign is you start finding a bunch of unnecessary things or tasks to do to replace working on that one thing. If God said you need to go to Bible study on Wednesday, okay, say God told you that. And he said, you, because you really need to make that next step from Sunday service to now going to Bible study on Wednesday and really diving into the word of God. Or maybe God may have said, you know, you need to go to Sunday school. I need you to be in Sunday school so you can be in place, so you can have that time to get those necessary lessons and fundamental things to move you towards discipleship. And so this is what happens. The moment that you declare that you need to go to Bible study on Wednesday or Tuesday, the moment that you declare you need to go to Sunday school on Sunday, the moment that you declare you need to be in school of ministry, guess what's going to happen? There is going to be a bunch of unnecessary things that you're going to find yourself doing to replace working on that goal to get you to Bible study, to get you to Sunday school to get you to leadership development, to get you into pursuit of the purpose that God has for you. The moment you declare it, and you have to recognize the enemy when he comes, because he's going to come like a thief in the night, number one. He's going to come like a burglar. A thief come in to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he does. He's going to come like a little fox. It don't have to be little things. I mean, don't have to be big things, little unnecessary things. And then you look up and say, oh, it's 8 o'clock. Oh, Lord, I was supposed to go to Bible study tonight. Oh, where did the time go? The enemy will distract you. You did run well. Who did hinder you? Who did hinder you? So make a list or a point or put it on your calendar, put it on your phone, and commit yourself to say, I am committed to doing this. Because God needs me to be at this place, at this time, in position to receive what he has for me. Whether it's a word, you don't know who's coming with a blessing. You don't know who has what in store for you. But in order to get it, you have to be in place. And so that means all those little distractions that you got going on, you need to draw them in. And say, nope, I'm sorry. I can talk to you afterwards, but this is my study time. Number three, when you begin to see it as a burden rather than an investment in your future, 